What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. We have reached the end of that work week, so you know what that means? It's time for Last Call. That's right, we're talking final order cutoff. We're going to give you our picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday, June 15th at 10 p.m. So you can get those orders into your LCS or online and make sure you guarantee yourself a copy, right, Jack? Oh, absolutely, Brian. And Patreon supporters, be sure to stay tuned because we have some things coming down the road that you're going to need to be on the lookout for. We have heard you. You're looking for more pre-order options, and we have partnered with just the company to do that. So stay tuned for more information there. Right, and we're going to get in our picks right now, starting with Batman number 94. We just had 92 hit the shelves. We know that we got that first appearance of the Underbroker. This issue is actually going to have one of those 1 in 25 of the Underbroker as well. Yeah, Brian, and I'm all in on this storyline, man. I'm, I'm all in on it, like Joker War in general, all the tie-ins and crossovers. It's been a great read. I also like it as far as value-wise, especially if you can get those pre-orders in. Like we mentioned, get the price as low as you can kind of get it. These are This is a set you want to build. On top of it, uh, you mentioned the 1 in 25 design variants. I think this entire set of design variants is going to do well. Now, I've got my eye more on the Clown Hunter in issue 95 than I do on issue 94. But I really think, again, this is this is kind of a completionist dream. Um, I think this is one where people are going to be chasing. And they, three great covers. Design variant cannot leave out that Matina variant. He's really been killing it on these Batman books. Yeah, I was going to say, there's people that want that one in 25. That's great. But I also would share the same opinion with you. Matina's been killing on those covers. And the story in general has just been great. I, I'm, I've been yeah. loving James Tenian's run so far on Batman and enjoy the story where it's going. Going from DC over to Boom Studios, but staying with James Tinian, we're getting with Something is Killing the Children number eight. This is going to have another one of those one in 25 incentive variants. Listen, if you've been reading this series, this is one of my favorite series that exists in comics of any genre, um, certainly probably independent comics. But regardless of the reader buzz, I think the secondary market is starting to pay attention to these last few variant covers. There's these Erica Slaughter covers, more and more people are starting to come around to the coolness of the character. Um, and the fact that a lot of these virgin variant covers kind of depict her in a lot of, say, gory or graphic scenes, um, that could be it. Uh, but it's very interesting because we've talked about it that you know after issue number one, on a lot of our shows, we weren't covering issues two, three, and four. And now suddenly with five, six, seven, going into eight, uh, I, the market is demanding coverage. So here we are. Last call. We're talking about issue number eight. And I think that if you want that one in 25 um, or those that FOC variant, which is usually one of the more limited books that Booms puts out, I would definitely, definitely, definitely make sure you pre-order before Monday. Yeah, and it's great because we always talk about, we've talked about since issue number one, Something's Killing Children, how great it is. Each issue we've enjoyed reading, then you get these great incentive variants. I also want to know from you, the viewers, are you guys reading this series? What do you think about it? Or do you think it's just hearing a bunch of secondary hop talk about the Netflix deal? But I truly love this series, just like Jack said. And we want to know you, the from, we want to know from you, the viewer, do you agree with it being a great series or are you just in it for the secondary hype as well? Playing a little hopscotch and heading back over to DC, we are going into Joker, Harley, Criminal Insanity. This is a Secret Files number one. It's that one shot from that black label. We've got that great David Mack, and there's also a Bill Sienkiewicz cover, right? Yeah, you know, still waiting on Marvel to come back full force. So DC has been dominating the day, and their lead man has been the Joker. So this is no surprise to me here. Now, Criminal Insanity didn't quite have the same buzz that Harleen had. But I like the fact that they're doing the Secret Files book. If you're not familiar with the Secret Files books, they would come out as like one shots after storylines or story arcs and kind of give you added information. True, true reader buzz books. So if you really loved this Black Label series, I think this is going to be very cool because this could add some insight, clear up some pictures, or get you excited for a possible next volume. But as you mentioned on top of it, talk about cover artists. You got two amazing painters with Bill Sienkiewicz and David Mack. You can't go wrong with either cover. I have a feeling this is one of those books I'm grabbing both. Yeah, it's, some people might shy away from it because it's a one shot, but... We've already seen some of the secret file books from like earlier ones they've done. 
do kind of gain some heat on the secondary market. So another thing we also talk about on this channel is selling books and sets. So if you have that regular Joker Harley Criminal Insanity, but you don't have this one, this might be that additional value where you can sell those as sets and make out a little bit more than if you just had the regular books by themselves. Absolutely, get a little more and differentiate yourself from the competition. I like that play, Brian. So here we have that Star Wars Adventures number 32. This comes from IDW. This isn't the Marvel version. It's that great all ages. And if you haven't been reading this, it's another great story. It's starting to catch some heat lately, isn't it, Jack? It is. Fun read. Some of the offshoot series, whether it's Vader's Castle or the uh, Battle Lines Clone uh, War stuff has done very well. We've seen what the incentives have done. And we've seen what those exclusive variants have done. Look at what that Yoda Peach Momoko has done. So we want to make sure you guys be on the lookout for, of course, our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, coming soon. They've got that Star Wars Adventures number 32 Peach Momoko Ray cover. And you guys are going to want to join the Frankie's Facebook group. It's not Frankie's Comics. It's just called Frankie's. And it is open for anyone, open to the public. You just got to answer a few questions to show your love for comics. Everybody's accepted. Being in the group allows you access to information about when these books go on sale, as well as code words to get access to these sales up to 30 minutes early. You're also getting free shipping within the United States. These are values that are unmatched. On top of it, Books like that Yoda book are exclusive to members of the Facebook group. So we've been trying to let everybody know, make sure you join that Facebook group. You don't want to miss out on a hot book like that Peach from Moco Last Ronin and then be one of these people crying because you didn't know and now you do and no one's half the battle. And we'll even take it one step further. We will put the link to Frankie's Facebook group in the description of this video, just in case you can't find it. Or you can also go to Frankie's regular Facebook page. He should have a button there to join the group as well. Getting over to Marvel for a minute, we have one of their few books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff. We're talking about Strange Academy number two. Number one is a great read. A lot of people have been talking about it. It's got a lot of reader buzz as well as some great characters in there. But here we get the second issue. It's going to have that regular cover. There's a character spotlight variant as well as a 1 in 25 RB Silva variant. Yeah, not much coming out from Marvel. I'll pass on Empire and wait till later. Probably read it in the trade. Uh, X-Force 10 is a great reader book, but you guys already know that. This is one that I think you want to pay attention to because a lot of new characters introduced. A lot of them uh, probably got that cameo in number one, may get that first full here. And I think there's going to continue to be characters introduced throughout this series. So this is one that I think is going to be worth paying attention to and also is one I'm very interested in from a reading perspective because I think that's going to give us kind of a guided look into where they're looking to go with this. And we've talked, and if you're new to the channel, you may not have heard this, but we've talked about the importance on the publishing side with modern comics to really world build around some of these characters. And we talked, when we originally talked about the new Doctor Strange series, that one of the issues with Doctor Strange and why Doctor Strange comics traditionally haven't sold is that people haven't really had this like supporting cast around them that they felt invested in. There's a few characters here and there, but it, it, Doctor Strange has been limited. And Strange Academy seems to be the type of vehicle that could really change that. So we've got high hopes for it. It seems like the community's paying attention to it. I hope that the slowdown of the pandemic doesn't hurt this series, but you know, let us know in the comment section if you read Strange Academy number one and what did you think? Yeah, I think that's a good thing about this show because a lot of people did like number one, like you mentioned with the stop and distribution and the slowdown in comics. We're trying to help make people aware so you're not just walking in the comic shop yeah. and go, oh man, I didn't even realize that was out. Right. So here we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2020 annual. A lot of times... I'm not a big fan of annual books, right? Because they're usually one shots and might have great stories, but there's not much to it. But every now and then you get those annuals, just like let's say Avengers number 10, right? That have those first appearances in there. That's what we're getting with this Sonic annual, aren't we? Yeah, and it comes out of one of those one shot kind of stories you're talking about. And I, I've kind of liked the annuals that IDW has been putting together. Now, the cover prices on them are inflated. They're larger books. But because of that, um, you get these big stories, and IDW has used them largely as jumping on points for future storylines. In this one, you're getting a story of the untold tale of a metal virus, where this like plague takes over, 
and kind of transforms all these characters into uh, kind of like these metal kind of versions of themselves. The one in 10 variant gives you the, the metal kind of almost Iron Man looking uh, Sonic the Hedgehog right on the cover. And again, at an $8 cover price, and we've talked about this before, a one in 10 incentive, the average retailer paying 50% off cover price. This at, at $4 a book is going to cost a retailer about $40 to get this incentive. Because of that, we're seeing above typical ratio prices being charged on pre the, the only the few pre-sales I've seen even exist on this. Most of them are in that 40 to $50 level, Brian. So this is one that's telling me, you know, I don't think a lot of these are going to get ordered. And I think the initial price is going to scare some people away. I really, really think that this one is one that may have legs, especially if this is a storyline that goes on uh, into the future. And again, this plague is created by Dr. Eggman. It's a sonic, uh, you know, front and center story. I think there's big chances for this one. And that one in 10 incentive with the new character, first appearance right on the cover. Um, it kind of has all those elements. I like Sonic books because it's always built by fandom more so than anything yeah. else, right? You're always talking about the reader buzz, the pop culture buzz. Everything might add into it between the video games, the cartoons, the movies, but you never see any single one of those actually make these books pop as much just as that pop culture, everyone's aware of Sonic and they want those books that actually mean something. So I agree. I, I like these Sonic books. Yeah, and I think that kind of plays into a lot of what we've talked about, Brian, with these properties um, that are kind of like hit the in the nostalgia feels. I think Sonic's one of them. A lot of people grew up playing it on the Sega Genesis, um, and a lot of kids are growing up now, like you mentioned, with cartoons and uh, mobile games and all kinds of different versions. And uh, it's great to see how well that this property has done on the publishing side for IDW. Yeah, I know my youngest is all he plays right now is Sonic Forces. Really? Yeah, that's awesome. That was mine as a kid, too. Moving over to Image for a second, we get Oblivion Song number 25. They're making a big issue out of this 25th issue, and it's going to have multiple covers for it as well. Yeah, Image is not playing around with this one. Skybound more specifically in Robert Kirkman, because he's brought some heavy hitter cover artists. You're talking David Finch. Uh, you're talking The Walking Dead's Charlie Ad Adlard. Adlard. Yeah. <laughs> I always want to say, get him and Mike Allred mixed yep, up. I always, I, yep, I do the same. Yep. So, as well as, of course, J. Scott Campbell coming with a, a kind of a different J. Scott Campbell look with kind of a male character front and center, a little different than you typically see J. Scott Campbell. Uh, and getting back to his Image Comics roots, too. So, uh, this is one that I think is going to get a lot of people's attention. Reader Buzz has been all over this series, no doubt. We've talked about its investability as far as where we foresee this kind of working as a property with Amazon. Um, we've had it featured on our top 10 back issues to be on the lookout list, um, as well as it'll land in firmly in volume two of the uh, 100 great back issues by which the first volume is available for just $1.95 on simplemanscomics.com right now, over 130 page ebook for just under $2. But yeah, it's, I think this is going to be a big issue. I think this will get a lot of people's attention. Um, people will be picking their favorite cover. It'll be interesting to see which of these covers, if any, spike on the secondary market. Yeah, I also wouldn't put them past them, especially with Robert Kirkman. You saw what they did with the first issue of this. They were, we see Boom doing a lot now, but Image did this a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if you see some type of secret variant, thank you variant of some sort. If they're going to make that big deal out of this issue, I would just, may, not, may or may not happen, but I'd be on the lookout just in case. Remember, Skybound's the company that ended The Walking Dead out of nowhere when no one saw it coming. So you really can't put anything past Robert Kirkman. He also dropped a series, Die, 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 just sending it to comic shops when they didn't even know they were getting it. So this guy can do anything whenever he feels like it. Here's a book that's no stranger to this channel. We talk about Better Root quite often. We also talk about those current movie homage variants. And here we have one that also has a great New Jack City homage in Better Root number nine. Yes, am I my brother's keeper? Nino New Brown. Yes, New Jack City. That is, a, that is a movie near and dear to my heart. But we've seen the success that these movie homage covers um, ha have had. Beyond their success, they've also hit a niche uh, within the kind of world of cinema that has gotten overlooked within comics and, and these homage covers, and that's these kind of like African-American-led um, classics, right? None of these movies that have been carried, they're not just 
classics within African American culture. There are classics, period, when we're talking about Do the Right Thing and Purple Rain and now uh, New Jack City. Um, so, you know, th- I think this is super cool. It's on brand for Bitterroot. I think it's, it's, it's something that if you're, again, I said this on the Bolo Show, if you're not reading Bitterroot, you need to read Bitterroot. It's a fantastic series. It has everything you could want from horror to history to culture and everything in between. Um, but aside from that, if you're like, I don't care about reading comic books, I like to sell or I like pretty covers. These variants are kind of keeping, again, an uh, yeah, independent. about selling as a set. Right. And this is an independent series, which usually at this you know stage would start to really slow down. And they're getting injected with Second Life because of these variants. So shout out to the editor or whoever put that, that kind of program together, because definitely, definitely, definitely a smart move. We talked about Joker and Harley at the beginning of the show, but now we're going to talk about Joker and that Joker war with Detective Comics number 1023. This has that great regular cover, but what I really like on this, big Lee Bermejo fan, has got a great cardstock variant for this. Yeah, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but we've talked about, you know, building this Joker War set and how I think that that's going to be a real great set to have long term um, and, and a differentiator from people who are just going to put the Batman run together. Um, and uh, man, Lee Bermejo, we were talking about this before we got on the mic tonight. Lee Bermejo is one of the most consistent, almost underutilized artists in the game. But I got to tell you, Brian, I'm kind of cover A on this one. This, this, this is all about Joker War, and this cover with Joker kind of standing over Batman gives me a killing joke feel to it. Um, so I really did cover A on this one, but this is another one where I'll be sure to be grabbing both covers, like I do with most Batman covers. Detectives got me right now doing these Bermejo covers. Yeah, and you also just saw how we talked about, if you watched the Bolo show, we had Nightwing number 71 on there, which is the Joker War tie-in. This seems like it's kind of kind of tied to that as well, because what the solicitor is talking about how Batman's going to need Robin to help him out, but is he going to be able to remember Nightwing 71 kind of tied into that part of that solicit. So like we say, these tie-ins are definitely worth picking up. So we, that's why we have Detective Comics on the FOC this week. So there it is, guys. We close out this week on Superman's Comics with The Last Call. This is that final order cutoff. Make sure you get those orders in Monday night, but that's not the only thing to do on Monday night, right, Jack? Oh, no, because we have that top 10 back issues video debuting every Monday night, giving you 10 back issues to be on the lookout for. We're not talking 10 back issues that already spiked. We're not talking 10 back issues that are hot at the moment, but will decline in a week. We are talking 10 back issues with room to grow, 10 back issues that we see moving in the future. And we're going to tell you why. So tune in every Monday and check it on the replay at Simple Men's Comics every week. And with that being said, this is Brian Jack with Simple Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.